You have been asking for this for a very long time and today I'm gonna finally show you how I make my own custom chess pieces and variants. Well, for most of them I'm using Fairy Stockfish, this website here. In this website you can play many many chess variants. For example, you can select uh, an army variant, uh, this is uh, the Horde of Pawns. You can select anything you want. Let me go to not classified and for example, let's choose, I don't know, Berolina. This is, I think, uh, the variant where the pawns move diagonally and capture forward. And of course, you can play around with all those variants. But if you go here, you can import your own chess variants. But how I make them? Don't worry, I will show you. The good thing is that Fairy Stockfish is open source. This means that the code for this website is available for everyone to use. And so here I am in GitHub. If you don't know what GitHub is, it's basically a place where people can share code and collaborate and so on and so forth. And if you go to this particular link, you can find the source code for Fairy Stockfish. By the way, all the links that I will use in this video will be in the description. So here we can go to source and then find the file which is called variants.ini. Let's click on that. And this is basically the file that contains all the chess variants that you see here. So all you need to do is download this thing and I will open it with the Visual Studio Code. Don't worry if you don't have it installed, you can open it with Notepad, but uh, for me, this is not very convenient, so I will use uh, Visual Studio Code. I already made a copy of this and I renamed it as testvariants.ini. So let's have a look at this file. In the beginning, there is some general information, then it explains how you must use this file. Uh, the pieces are defined and then there are also all the different parameters. Don't worry about that for now. We will start from scratch. Also, there is an example uh, variant, but as I said, we will start from zero. So to make a chess variant, first we have to insert square brackets and let's give it a name. I will go for 00 test. Weird name, but you will see why I chose it. And then I will put a colon and write chess. So this is the name of the variant, 00 test. And if you put a colon and write something else, this means that this variant inherits all the rules from the variant on the right. In this case, this is normal chess. Actually, if you go up, this is explained better than I have just did. So this means that instead of starting from scratch, you can use an existing variant, in our case is normal chess, use all the rules that exist in this variant and only define the differences to the parent variant. So let's go back. So in our case, if we don't do anything else, let me save this file and now I will go back to Fairy Stockfish, upload this file and I can't find it. Okay, let's make a few changes. Let's say we want to have seven files and eight ranks. So there is a parameter called max file and we want this to be equal to seven. You can also set the max rank to eight. You don't have to put this because by default this parameter is equal to eight Remember, we are using the chess uh, variant as our parent, which has these values. But when you change one of them, I guess it's best to have both of them visible. So let's try now. Save the file and import it. By the way, before you import again the file, always remember to refresh this page. Now you can import. And well, now this variant appears. And that's why I put the zero, zero in front. So it goes uh, in the top alphabetically. And as you can see, we have eight ranks, but only seven files. One of them is missing. But when you change the dimensions, 
it's best to always include this parameter as well. This is the start fan parameter. This indicates what is the starting position because sometimes, uh, and I encountered this before, if you change only this but you don't specify which pieces you want in the start position, uh, it doesn't work. So we need to put the initial start position in a fan notation. By the way, if you don't know how to write fan notation, basically you start from the top left and you go like this, then this, then this and so on. Uh, black pieces are specified with uh, lowercase, while white pieces are specified with uppercase. And when you have blank spaces, you just put a number. So in this case it will be seven. I will just show you how to do this. Uh, so we start from the, the top left, so it's rook. And fortunately I can just use this. But remember, we are skipping the uh, kingside rook, so remove that. And to change uh, the file, we just use uh, slash. Then we need seven pawns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then seven, 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 I think it's, yeah, four, seven white pawns, three, four, five, six, seven. And the same for the white pieces, remove the last rook. Just to show you that uh, this works, let's make a small change. Let's say, wait, that's not the correct uh, pieces. But anyway, let's stick with those just to show you that this changes. So let's refresh. And now we have this starting position with all those bishop and seven only ranks. Perfect. Now I want to show you how we can add custom pieces. And for visualization purposes, I'm gonna use this fan. Let me show you how it looks. So we're gonna focus on this piece here, which for now looks and acts like a normal king. I put this pawn here just so it's not a stalemate because for some reason, uh, if I don't do it, it uh, always uh, stops uh, the variant as a draw. So I put another piece here just to have an opponent piece as well. And now let's try to edit this piece. So let's use a custom, sorry, a custom piece instead. So first of all, you have to define which uh, symbol your custom piece you want to have. In my case, I'm gonna stick with K for king because I already have this in the fan. And also because we are already inheriting from the normal chess, this piece will always look like a normal king. This is the, the picture that uh, it's gonna use. So then after the uh, symbol, you put a colon and then you specify how you want this piece to move. And to do that, you need to know how to use beta notation. So what is that? Let's focus on this table here. This asterisk indicates our piece and the letters indicate the directions that we want our piece to be able to move. In a case of a king, we want it to move to W and F in all those directions. So let's try that. So W, F and the order doesn't matter. Let's stick with that. Let's save and indeed this piece can move as a king, but because it's no longer a normal king, it can run it to check, but that's not very important for now. It can, yeah, that's a draw. <laughs> but what if we want that this piece to move like a rook? Well, then we need to remove the diagonal direction, which is F. But if we leave it like this, it will only move in this direction, but only one square. Let's try this. And of course, this is what happens. I cannot move all the way, but I would like a rook to be able to move. To do that, we need to add a zero. Now, if I save it and upload it again, indeed, this piece moves like a rook. Perfect. And if we go back to this table, you can try many, many things. 
Let's go for G. Uh, G means it can move diagonally, but uh, three squares. So let's try that. So let's go for G. Sorry, G. Save. Refresh and then import. Always remember to refresh. And indeed, this piece can move in this uh, direction. There are, of course, a lot of things that you can modify. You can read all of them in this uh, website here. Uh, one last thing that I want to show you is how you can change uh, the move direction and the capture direction. Uh, for example, we know that pawns can capture diagonally, but they can only move forward. So what if we wanted our king to be able, our king-like piece to be able to capture in one of the two uh, directions, but only move in the other one? To do that, in front of those W or Fs, you can put a small m for move or a small c for capture. So let's try this. And indeed, it can only move in the W direction. And now it can move in the four directions of the W, but it can also capture diagonally. So yeah, this is how in a nutshell I make most of my chess variants. Of course, there are so many parameters that you can use. Uh, I haven't used most of them, but uh, of course you can go through them and play around and make uh, your custom chess variants as complicated as you like. Of course, you have to be careful, you will find some bugs along the way if you put some parameters that don't match. But as I said, you can play around and hopefully you can enjoy this. I only showed you the very basics. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but before we end this video, uh, I need to mention that although this is how I mostly make chess variant, uh, I have used uh, other methods in the past as well. For example, I have used chess.com uh, custom variants uh, section where you can edit some positions and play them. I have made a couple videos like this. Uh, also, uh, for some older videos, I used the Python script. Uh, to play with uh, fairy stockfish where I was not allowed to cross or land on certain squares. For example, the video with the wall and the um, hole in the center were made like this. So I played chess with fairy stockfish using a Python script where I had, uh, we both had those restrictions and then I replicated this game on uh, chess.com analysis board and that's how I filmed it. So yeah, that's basically it. For the future, I have uh, other ideas as well on how I can make even more exciting chess variants. But for now, this is how I make them. I hope this has answered some questions uh, from you. But anyway, for today, that was it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.